Hello, this is Damir for the Droid Effect and today I'm going to review the Pac-Man ROM Nightly in 082514. This is an all-in-one ROM that offers you a lot of nice features, so let's dive right in. As always, you can check my database for a detailed list of all the features. I will start this video with the good stuff of this ROM, then head over to the not so good stuff, continuing to talk about performance and battery life, followed by a comparison with other ROMs. After that I will tell you who I think this ROM is best suited for and who it is not. Finishing the review with my personal opinion and the conclusion. Okay, let's start the review taking a quick look at all the good stuff. The first big difference you will see is when you enter the options. At first glance it looks almost like stock Android with no real customization at all. But if you swipe the settings to the right, you will enter the Pac-Man settings. Here you can find almost all the options to customize your Pac-Man experience. This is quite a nice feature because it separates itself from the normal settings and doesn't disturb you if not needed, but it is also always quickly available to access still. Another nice just recently added feature is the floating mode for the quick settings. If you pull down the notification bar to access your settings menu, you will see this opening in the so-called floating mode. This is also known from parent Android's Halo. But there's a lot more to the notification panel. If you open the left one you will see the optional weather panel in the notifications as well. And then let's not forget about the benefits of being such a big team like Pac-Man. There are tons of supported devices officially but also unofficially. And it should be easy enough to find also a build for your device whatever it may be. But being a big team also offers you to get bugs quickly fixed, new features added and also constant nightly updates for every device. Ok now let's head over to the not so good stuff. It is a nightly so bugs and issues are to be expected which would be the following ones. Setting a notification background isn't working at the moment but I am sure this will be fixed soon. There is also a weird bug when an app get super user permissions granted. What happens is the app jumping into the background but still running. This will only happen for the first time when acquiring super user and shouldn't be that big of a deal though I think. The last not so good thing I want to talk about is the stability. In my whole time reviewing the ROM I was having trouble apps crashing here and there. It is nothing serious and only maybe happens 4 or 5 times a day but still it can get annoying from time to time. And then again of course it is a nightly after all. The good part is though, I didn't run into any major trouble like freezes and reboots. It was only down to simple false closing of apps. Being such a big team, issues like those should be fixed soon. It's time to talk about the performance and battery life now. Starting with battery life, I have to admit I am still impressed about battery life on the next 7 running Android 4.3. I got solid 6 hours of screen time with about 12 to 15 in total. That's about the same I got with Cyanogen mod so it seems to be 4.3 after all providing the extra battery life. Since 4.2.2 ROMs only got me about 5 hours of screen time tops. Performance wise itself it's noticeably faster and smoother than Cyanogen mod but still wasn't that good of experience like the best 4.2.2 ROMs. That's why I tried a few different custom kernels to see if things would change. M kernel which was clocked at 1500 MHz by default was definitely smoother and less laggy but it drastically lacked in touch responsibility. Everything had a slight delay and move friends didn't seem quite right. Franco kernel only clocked at about 1300 MHz was about as smooth and nice as M kernel but with way better touch responsibility here so definitely a good one. The one kernel though that really impressed me was the experience kernel. Also clocked at 1500 MHz by default, it outperformed any kernel I have tested so far. Buttery smooth, fast and with great touch response, it offered very lightweight and amazing experience. The best one I've experienced so far to be honest. All the custom kernels were able to deliver me about the same battery life than the stock one did. Fantastic considering you get way better performance with the same battery life. But how does this ROM now compare to other ones? Right now it is the 4.3 ROM containing the most and best features, at least for the Nexus 7, not really sure about other devices. By default it is smoother than the previously reviewed Cyanogen mod and it is above average overall, but it is not as good as the best 4.2.2 ROMs which definitely seem to be better optimized still. Battery life was pretty much exactly the same as Cyanogen mod 10.2. This means about one additional hour of screen on time compared to 4.2.2 ROMs. The part where it differs mostly to CM is the stability. Apps crash a lot more and some small things just don't work as expected. That's definitely the most important thing the team has to work on. Ok, let's check who this ROM is for in my opinion and who it is not. 
It is mainly meant for people searching for the highest amount of features available and also for everyone who wants great performance and battery life running the latest version of Android 4.3. It is not so much for people who prefer custom ROMs being closer to stock Android and for all those who want or need a completely stable and mostly bug free ROM. People who are not willing to live with those bugs should better stay away from these nightlies just to be sure and maybe better wait for a stable build to be released. Now let's finish this review with my personal opinion. I've used this ROM on both my phone and the Nexus 7 for the last week or so and here is what I think. Since the development on my HSC One X is pretty much dead, I decided to use this ROM as my daily driver until it will be replaced later this year. The few remaining bugs should be ironed out pretty soon I'm sure, so I have no problem with my decision. I would also be okay with this ROM as my daily driver for the Nexus 7 for now, but the current custom ROM community for the old Nexus 7 is still way too active for me to settle on one ROM alone. And after all, I jump from one ROM to another in order to do my reviews so my custom ROM database will continue growing. That's it for my review of the Pac-Man ROM Nightly. I hope you liked it and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.